Hi, I'm Alex Rosen. I focus on business development for IT People's blockchain team. The team built a demo application that I'm going to walk you through. This auction chain demo was developed for our team to test out and demonstrate some capabilities of the Fabric blockchain within the Hyperledger project. We've made the code for the application available on GitHub. We hope the community will join us in evolving the application. That way it can be used for newcomers to learn and to show off the latest features of Fabric. I have a few slides to set the stage for what you'll see in the demo. So this is an art and antiques auction. It was envisioned to uh, include a business network that might have buyers and sellers, um, auction houses that might compete to facilitate auctions, banks that might uh, finance, uh, provide financing during sales, shippers to move items, and insurance um, that would come into play potentially at multiple stages of this process. So we wanted to build it as a blockchain application. We think it has benefits there because blockchain would allow multiple stakeholders to trade on the common platform. They uh, transact against a common ledger. The blockchain can be used to ensure the authenticity of the items and to track them over time. Um, and the Fabric blockchain in particular enables for uh, parties to have private contracts between them. So it's a bit different than other blockchain technologies, but might uh, be valuable in this kind of scenario. And ultimately, um, this could be a decentralized alternative to markets like Amazon and eBay. So we built one basic auction scenario where a seller who owns assets uh, desires to um, place an item uh, on auction and they might communicate with one or more auction houses. Um, the auction house could evaluate the item, they could authenticate it, determine a valuation, um, and accept the item um, and put, decide to put it uh, on auction for the seller. Um, they would specify some criteria for the auction. In our case, it's just really the duration of the auction. And then bidders would come in and place bids um, and we will allow, um, we do allow for a reserve price to be set and a buy it now price to be set for the item. So bidders bid, um, all of their bids are recorded into the blockchain. If a bid is below the reserve price, it will be rejected by business logic we built into the solution. Ultimately, there's a timer. Um, the highest bid um, becomes the hammer price for the item and a settlement process would begin. In our case, it's a simple settlement uh, process where a new owner uh, item key is generated and can be used, uh, just uh, provided to that new owner. Um, but there could be more complex settlement scenarios in a future version of the application. We also wanted to just uh, build a basic asset transfer capability. So if a seller owns an asset, they might just want to um, transfer it to um, a friend or family member. And so we have that uh, capability. The price doesn't change in that scenario, but a new key is created. So in order to set up the demo, we have to load a few things. So we're actually loading um, users into the blockchain. This eventually could be something um, that could be done um, externally or integrated with uh, a directory service, but for our case, we're loading in users um, that we'll use in the demo. And then we also load in um, a series of assets. So an asset has an asset owner, which would be one of our users, registers the asset. Um, we have some logic that verifies uh, the owner is a valid party. Um, there could be more um, metadata or certificates of authenticity stored about the asset. We're right now um, uh, encrypting the digital representation of the asset and generating a private key for the asset. Okay, so that's the setup and we'll switch over to the demo. Now we're looking at the home screen of the application. And uh, when assets are loaded on the blockchain, they'll show up on this home screen. Right now we have an empty blockchain, 
So we're going to uh, jump in and do some of that setup work I just described to you. We're going to uh, open one terminal to start up our uh, blockchain services uh, themselves. So we'll, uh, we have a peer running now. And then in a second, we're going to register our chain code where all of the logic for this application resides. And then in the third, we'll begin um, creating some users. So we're running a script and uh, we're getting back transaction IDs um, for each of the user tran creation transactions that uh, we're executing uh, in the chain code. Um, now that we've got some users, we can create some assets on the blockchain. So again, we're just seeing uh, IDs returned for those transactions. Every time we're creating an asset, it's, um, in our case, uh, encrypting an image. Um, and uh, there's a key that gets returned to the uh, owner of that asset. So now we've refreshed the home screen. And we can see we've got a bunch of assets available for us. Um, and uh, I mentioned that we created uh, some users uh, to work with, but we want to do one more and just show you that we do have a form here. We've got to put a numeric ID 900 for Mohan, um, who is actually uh, operating the demo for us. And we'll fill in some more details for his user ID. Um, just a couple more items. This could be any kind of information. This is all, in our case, recorded on the blockchain and becomes uh, an immutable record. You can see we've had a successful user registration. Now we'll uh, look at one of the items that we've stored on the blockchain. And um, we can see who the current owner is, um, what its uh, last purchase price was, and the key that was used for encrypting the image um, that represents, um, that only the owner would have. Before we put it on auction, we can set a reserve price and we can set a buy it now price. And then we can go ahead, put it on auction, and get back uh, an auction ID. What we're really doing is requesting that the asset uh, be put on auction with an auction house. We're just going to do that for a second item now. Um, enter in a reserve price, request that it uh, be put on auction, and we get an ID back. Now we're going to switch over to a role like an auction house where they would see the requests that have come in, and they can look at the details of those requests. Um, so what item is being requested, what uh, user is requesting to put it on auction, and then they can choose uh, whether or not you know, they want to open up an auction. So they're gonna open this auction, um, and they're gonna set a duration for the auction. So we just set a minute, and it's gonna actually tick by a little bit fast, and we're in this video a little faster for you. Um, so now we're gonna start placing bids, and you'll notice this particular bid is below the reserve price, so it gets rejected. Um, but the next bid is um, within the range, above the reserve, and each of these bids is getting recorded onto the blockchain. An event is being generated whenever a new highest bid um, is received, and um, our user interface is uh, capturing those events and presenting the highest bid. So now we've got an auction closed. We can go back and look at um, the details here and see that we've got a new purchase price and a new owner. Mohan owns this artwork now and he's got a new key um, for that uh, particular asset. The last thing we'll show is just a asset transfer. So here you would just choose an asset and then choose uh, who you want to transfer it to and click transfer and then when we go back and look at the asset we will see that that did succeed. The price hasn't changed, but the owner has changed, and we've generated a new key for the asset. So that's what we wanted to show you in this demo. Thanks a lot for uh, taking a look. And as a reminder, this code is up on 
GitHub, and we'd love to have your feedback and participation in evolving it.